Frankenstein must be destroyed. Peter Cushing, Veronica Carlson. Frankenstein must be destroyed. This picture has been rated M, suggested for mature audiences. and very lushly produced were also rather daring in some of the issues they uh, addressed, if not head-on, certainly made allusion to. Did any of that make you uncomfortable? No, none of those allusions uh, made me feel uncomfortable because I knew they were there and it was a very safe crew and a, a very safe and happy gathering of like-minded people and it wasn't in your face. It was Everybody knew about it, but it was like the Victorian era itself. It was there, but no, you didn't see it, right? It was there, you know, like where they put the tablecloths over the legs of chairs, the <laughs> tables were all covered up. No, it was, it was, um, it was a behind-the-scenes knowledge. And viewing a lot of the stills from those days, behind-the-scenes stills. Yes. There seem, in some respects, your relationship with Lee and with Cushing, yes. they almost seem to have taken you under their wing as yeah. a younger sister. Did yes. you feel as though they were protective of you? Absolutely I did, and that, that was amazing, absolutely lovely. Christopher, of course, of all people, I expected to be this lord of the manor. He's so aristocratic, and of course his reputation goes before him. I was a big fan. And uh, he, he couldn't have been more down-to-earth or more helpful or more professional. He would sing wonderful opera in, in when we were getting already, you know, dolled up and dusted. And he spoke seven languages. I believe to his uh, frustration, the only one he couldn't really master was his wife's accent, uh, language was Danish. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that. But he gave me my eye line when I was really nervous and Dracula's risen from the grave and Freddie said, look at my hand, and this is Dracula. And I was on my own behind, and I, had, I felt a surge of panic. And Chris's voice came from behind the hand in the darkness and said, no, Freddie, I'll be her eye line. And he reacted to me as if the camera were on him. And he gave me all I needed, and I've never, ever stopped being grateful for that moment. And I learned many years later that Gregory Peck had done the same for him when he was younger. And I didn't know that till quite recently. But that was a moment I'll treasure forever. It, yeah. And I, I said to him once, this is trivial really, I said, that cape is so beautiful. He said, uh, I said, may I just have it just for a moment? May I wear it? And he said, well, be ready for it. It's quite heavy. It weighed 30 pounds. I nearly fell to the floor. My knees nearly buckled. But that's the kind of man he was. He was so approachable. And he would discuss the scenes with Freddie and see what was best. And he would discuss what, how things should be. No, I, and Peter, well, he was something else altogether. He had to be the most beautiful, gentlemanly man I've ever met. He, he, Ed, I think anyone who said anything horrible about Peter would be, would be stoned. Because he, everybody adored him. Everybody. There was not an exception to the rule. Not one, one person. He was, he was a lovely soul. You and Steve Bertleib uh, have been good friends for a yes. number of years. How did the two of you come to know one another? I attended a convention, my first, uh, 23 years ago. Steve loves to remind me exactly how long ago it was. And <laughs> every time we meet, do you realize it was 23? Uh, yes, I do. And he showed me some poetry. He's got the soul of a poet, this man. And I read a couple of them, but one stood out. Years, I'm a reader, I love to read, and Hans Andersen's story of the little match girl 
it brought that to mind. I still can't read that one to my granddaughter without breaking down. So he, told, he showed me this poem about this little girl and I read it. And went, later on, after I'd read it, I went up to him and pinched his arm and he turned around to see why and I said, you made me cry. And he did, it, it, made, it brought tears to my eyes and uh, the poem was so moving. And he sends me his poetry now, and I've got a shoebox full of Steve's poetry and letters and writings of his movie critiques, which are wonderful. And in such depth, he's very knowledgeable. Immensely, a beautiful writer. He writes beautifully. So I enjoy everything he does. He's got, he knows so many people. He's had a most incredible career. He's known such famous people and uh, legions, so I can't go there. But uh, he's a wonderful guy. Now, as far as working with uh, Caliber, I mean, uh, my goodness, uh, Cushing and Lee and, yes. and, and, and Rupert, um, uh, Rupert Davis, Rupert Davis. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal yeah. actors, and you certainly hold your own with them. Thank you. Uh, oh, very that was much. amazing to work with Freddie Jones. Phenomenal. Then John Hurt later, another movie. But my mm -hmm. goodness, yes. And uh, did you feel as though you learned from these? If Every single Titans. time, every single time, every actor I worked with gave me something in the nicest possible way. I know Freddie came up to me when I, you know, after I was, you know, I was going to go for him with a scalpel. He said, "Darling, you really made me feel afraid. Well done." And I thought, "Oh, Freddie, that was what a lovely thing to say." You don't forget those things; they stay with you, and it bolsters your confidence. And it, to see a, an actor's reaction to you emboldens your own. I found it a I wish I'd done more. I really do. I'd love to have done more. I'd love to have had more, more of a role in a in a movie than I. I was getting there, but I, I just I, I left the film industry. Uh, why did you leave the film industry? Nudity came into things, and now the what you were talking about earlier, uh, you know, being so I did not want that face. kind of exposure. And if one day I had a family, apart from my own parents, whom I I've thought were the world of, I never wanted them to be able to say, oh, I saw your mother in a movie. And none of the kids have ever done that. One of my highlights of this promise to myself was uh, when my son, almost 30, put a sheet on his garage door in the, in the cul-de-sac where we live and played Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed at Everyone came from all their houses and sat and watched. And he stood beside me with his arm around my shoulders. And he was so proud. And I thought, well, that's, that was made everything worthwhile. Because none of his friends could say, I saw your mom in a movie last night. And uh, my sons and my daughters-in-law are proud of me. And my, so is my daughter and my grandchildren. That, that's my gift. Good time to leave. I don't regret that. Fantastic. So I'm <laughs> glad I asked. That's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> okay.